Anybody in the world out there? Is it on? I don't know. I know it's kind of funny. Get sure you come in and trying to figure out. Just hang on. I don't know. We'll just, just hang out it. until it tells us someone's right. here. Or no one will come and we're just doing phone. the show all by ourselves. That's always right, cool too. Yeah, we're moving. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Night turn is done. Yeah. So I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, I can't hear myself. Don't hear myself. Yeah, Hello. <laughs> Anybody here? Yeah, there we go. We're just gonna. I like those little guys on the screen. Talk to ourselves today. Anybody in the room? It's like you're singing it. Who's here? Say hello. Little dudes. Little dudes Where can I there. type in? Oh, you can't. Type. Mama D. I love Mama D. Hi, Mama D. Robbie, what's up? What's up? Good afternoon, Mama D. Hey, hi. How are we? Hey, my like uh, slipping in going. Okay, let's say hi. Croco, what's up? What's up? Good afternoon. It's afternoon already. It is. It is afternoon. We got Halloween. Halloween time. Fume chick. What up, brother? What up? What up? That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I can see. Kevin, okay, what's up? Oh, what's up? Got... Yeah, I know because it's like coming through on that part. Makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. Say hi. Tell us. Um, Say hi. What is it? What do we like to do here? Don't mind me as I yeah. zoom on in here. Tell us on there. Where are you from? Where are you from? And what sport? Okay, I go. Not as giddy as you. Yes, you are. <laughs> Teddy, what up, what up, buddy? What's up, what's up? Beauty guys. Ah, theme chick. Chilling, buddy. Little parent show action. Look at this. Isn't life good? This is my job, buddy. I get to wear horns and come online and talk to people about some fun stuff. <laughs> He's very horny today. <laughs> I'm feeling, it. I'm feeling it. Yeah, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. What do you think of the new? I love your referee costume, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the good old referee costume. Oh, boy. Easy. <laughs> Down boy. <laughs> Down it's a good boy. costume. It's a good, you should sing it up if people kind of see. No, it's okay. <laughs> that, that different show. That's, that one's that free. What's up, Teddy? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny how, like, you see the, uh, it, like, um, takes time on there. And then how it comes on, the delay. Both. I'm just waiting to care. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, technical problems. Lots of problems. Right, we got guys here. We got it. Let's get yes. it going. Let's get it going. So? So? What is this? That's my donkey outfit. Because you're an ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling spunky today. Oh, uh, yeah. You're good. You're good. Is that the best you come up with? Nope. That's I'm going to get that. Don't worry. I'm going to get that one to get that one going. <laughs> Every day of my life. Oh, that's awesome. In Moscow. Oh, oh, nice. nice. Wow. Nice. Really nice. Really nice. Very nice. Okay. So, the weekend was good. <laughs> yeah? You had a good mm -hmm. weekend? We were not together, together this weekend. weekend. I know. And it, well, it was good, other than obviously not having me and the kids there. Yeah, I'm sure. That was Terrible. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was. I did, no, actually, to be honest, I did really start missing the kids a lot. And, and you too. The kids. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings mutual. <laughs> <laughs> but now here, so it's not great. Yeah, we're back together. Now, so where were you? Uh, I, mean, so I, I don't know. Like, let's uh, share. Yeah, I was up at uh, Bean Town, up in uh, Boston area. So I did the Bean Town and the Beast, um, two big showcases. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was cool. It was cool. It was, um, you know, you typically go all the other years and stuff like that. That through the years I've been there and two highly scouted events. I and mean, there were so many guys there. It was pretty awesome. So when it, when it gets like that, the one thing that was cool is being able to run into so many different college coaches, other prep school coaches, junior coaches, guys that are, you know, midget, whatever it is, all guys that are in the circuit. And uh, it was pretty cool from the perspective of this year was feeling a lot of love with what we're doing, which I thought oh, was really cool. cool. That's which, cool. I, which I thought was really cool. It was a little different on that side of like, just a lot of guys are like, the message is right. Like even one of the coaches I was talking to, it was cool. He was like, you know, it's funny. I, I, I get the perspective of I come in on both sides of you're bringing in that new school flavor and I still keep my old school flavor with it. And so that was pretty badass feedback. Oh, honey, you're doing a great job. Good job. Kind of this was good. You know what? You need to hear it. You need to hear it. It felt good. It raises the confidence up, right? It allows us to come on here and Absolutely. wear horny horns and talk to people and that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do it without the horny horns. Yeah, now. exactly. On. Exactly. But no, it was fun. It was fun from that perspective to just to get the feedback was so important, right? Because we need to hear it. We need to hear that it's going on. Absolutely. So, but, 
Um, you know, that was a big thing. But I'll tell you what the other interesting thing that goes on is that um, how many more talented players there are. There's just so many more players. So you've now. noticed a difference over the years? Yeah. I mean, you've been going to this event for, I'd say you probably go to this event almost every single year. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest part now that I'm noticing is just how many more kids can play. Uh, you know, it's like you've got you've got the usual suspects. You've got the kids that are just at this level that are just that good, which is about 5 to 10% of the players. Then you're just like, wow, that kid is whew, shoe in done. There's no doubt about it. At a younger age, you can just tell that they're going to keep progressing at, at those stages and stay at that level. You could just – there's certain players you just tell, right? But then what's happened is that next tier of players, which is basically the next like 75 to 80% that can just play the game, but they're more like, and I hate to label it in this way, but it's like those third, fourth line players that are going to be at that level, at the you know next level, whether it's whether college, maybe junior pro, it doesn't matter. Like It's just those guys are becoming tougher and tougher to judge because there's so many that fall into that category that could do the job. Right. They literally could be at that level and do the job, no problem. And so seeing that now is really interesting to just how many more players exist that are like that than they did before. Because before you had those players there, but it, you still just knew those are the guys. Well, the honest talent is now a commodity. Yeah. That's expected. Just that level of – It's a given. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's what else, you know, when you go and you speak to recruiters or scouts from organizations, yeah. what they all say is the play is – that's the easy part. Everyone's going to have a given that. Now. It's the it's other stuff now. is what they're really looking for. Character, off ice. Character, compete level. I, if, there was one, if there was one difference that I put on of where you can still just tell and is a, is a surefire sign, and I, I don't think this will ever change, but it really comes down to it. If you give me a very talented player who doesn't compete and you've got another player that isn't as talented but just competes all the time, I'm taking the one that competes all the time because that character – that's how you win championships. I'll put it up against. I don't care. You, I just need a sprinkle of the talent. You need the talent. You need it. It needs to be there of those high level, you know, the rock stars that everybody has to run after. But the rest, the the compete level, that part is still, you can just still totally tell it exists and it's there. And there's no doubt about it. That part is there. It's alive and well. So you got a push weekend. Talent. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know if it was Kush, but. Oh, by my definition, it's Kush. I'm freaking gassed. A couple of wolves. No, nope, really don't get days. to come home and complain. Yeah. No way. Uh, let's uh, let's. Uh... <laughs> I got to run after the little ones all by myself all weekend. I don't want to hear that you're tired. Why they're tough? You kidding me? They're so cute. Yeah. That's your job. Mm -hmm. You get to you get to go and look after these kids all weekend. Are you kidding me? I love that. Why should be so lucky? Are you serious? I can leave <laughs> you for an hour with our children without the phone calls starting to roll oh in. Oh my god, they're nuts. I know. They're nuts. It's They're exhausting. Awesome, so. yeah. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole lot of thing the whole time. It's kind of like going in. Imagine if you had but a normal size head. I know. Well, but let's get going on, yeah. <laughs> on our topic we know why for today. Here. Topic yeah. for today. Fears. Fears. Yeah. Fears. Let's talk fears. about fears. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Bruce. Scary. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. Fears. Bruce. I got little guys and little green scared. guys. I know you see them like marching um, around. They're kind of cute. Yeah. Fears. I, you know, scary it's. Way, I guess. Fears. What have we learned about fears so far from what we do, right? Fears is, it's such a huge part to, uh, everyone can relate in anything. This isn't a youth sports thing. No, this isn't a, board, this like, is an athlete. Life thing. This is a life thing. This is Absolutely. a life thing. And the, the fear part that we found inside of our transformation was basically that, that first step on everything of being able to look at it and see like how important understanding your fears really is. And I think a big part of obviously the segment of what we really want to get into today is, the fears that the parents face, the fears that players will face, even coaches and all that stuff. But for the most part, right, is understanding, helping parents understand that what they're facing is completely normal, completely normal. Yeah, and I think in general that's one of the things that's somewhat comforting is you may have fears or get scared of things, but we all have – there's not a person alive that doesn't have a fear. Why are you laughing? Send me a nice hat. <laughs> hey, <Cindy. laughs> but, like, we all have fears. Yeah. It doesn't I don't think there's a person on the planet that can be like, I'm not scared of anything. I got no fear. And I probably call bullshit on that because no, it's bullshit. everyone uh, yeah. is has something. There's always something that um, Yeah. Or it's you're not afraid of it, but you're you're willing to take it on, but that you still feel the feeling of fear. Yeah. Like even like those uh, those sports, right? Those extreme sports. They're doing it because I they know, love no, they, they love the feeling of fear. But they know the right. feeling. The adrenaline right? the adrenaline yeah. rush, like when you talk to someone. Of a few I've talked to, love. it's still I just love going through that and just testing the boundaries, right. and that's that's the cool part of that. But fears, right? It's um, 
interesting fears of our own. Of yeah. Our own. So I could say I never probably thought I'd end up in this situation. I, you know, used to work in corporate America and right. all that. And, and the idea of not having health insurance, the idea of not having a steady paycheck were all things I'm like, I, I had such a fear of not being able to leave that world. There's yeah. no way I'm going to be able to leave my corporate America job to go work for myself because it scared the crap out of me. I'm like, how are we going to survive? My vision was, I'm going to be living in a cardboard box on the side of the road <laughs> and that's going to be my life. And I'm going to be like, oh, remember when I left that job? That was so great. Long. How much time <laughs> no. No, not for me. <laughs> you know, you anything about your life, you know that no part of that is fun for me. Not even a little. So, but what I did was I kind of recognized that's my fear and actually painting that worst case scenario in my head, the cardboard box side of the road, no, you know, yeah, yeah. like McDonald's every day or whatever. But like yeah. acknowledging, okay, and then your brain starts to go, well, okay, if that were to happen, right, then what would I do? And, oh, yeah. But I worked through it and I said, fuck it. And um, bye, corporate America. And this was years ago now yeah, I mean, it's yeah, been exactly. so long we've been yeah. on a lot of different ventures um yeah. together in that non-corporate way and, and, I, and i'll admit i definitely held this up i definitely it was like one of those things of where for you of where when you went all in with us you were ready well, to go yeah okay yeah exactly you were ready to go and but my fear held us up and and i'm you know i fully admit to it Absolutely. no problem with that part right is that what happened at that point of our lives was that i still felt i had to be a part of the system and that's what ends up happening is that I think a lot of us get caught up in the system, the matrix, right? Of, and what do I mean by that? Was that what hit me was that I would take on. Sorry, that's being fuzzy in your eye. Yeah, get that out there. Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. Okay. <laughs> but a big, a big part of what hit me um, inside of our world was that the hats, right? No pun intended. I don't know, but how many hats? we had to wear right through the years of where, all right, you're going to head coach the 16s, 18s. You're going to do that. You're also going to be the player development guy. Oh, by the way, you're going to run the intro to hockey program. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You had to do everything, right? You, you had like 10 different responsibilities. Oh, and then by the way, I, we get to bring our original company, Evolving Athletes. Right. We get to bring that along for the ride. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get to do your own thing, but just make sure you do all the things that we do. But we thought that there was no way our thing could survive exactly. without the connection to an organization it, supporting us. Exactly. How many Still years? waiting on one of those organizations to be supportive, but that's a <laughs> conversation for another day. And I can say shit you can, so I I'm know, just putting it know. out there. I, I told you I was sponsored right. today. I had a lot of coffee, so. So good. I love, it. I love, it. I love it. But no, but it's, it's the truth, though. Like, from an organizational standpoint, you get stuck in that mindset of thinking that, you know what? There's no way, like, and I think timing is everything, right? If it wasn't for things like this, being online, so that and being able to use this as a tool, this was 10 years ago, there's no way to have more of that confidence to do this. Well, and I also think, I'm going to psychoanalyze you right now, that sure. not having the prototypical, like, head coaching role. Two minute. No. I'm sports <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Disturbing. <laughs> like, 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 was, what the hell is that? Good. We got costumes, we got props, we got all kinds of shit today. Somebody help me. I'm sorry, God. I'm going to blink three times for more help. <laughs> Please. I'm having some fun. I don't even know what <laughs> you You're surprised me. by that one, <laughs> Yeah, you lost me with the whistle. So, the psychoanalyze. Go ahead. You can psychoanalyze. Well, that you didn't think you could be fulfilled as a coach without being the, behind the bench. Yeah, 100%. That you weren't ready to take that step to recognize that you could be fulfilled as a coach without being yeah, in the definite, like, typical role of a coach yeah. on the ice, you know, yeah. in games, in those environments. Yeah, no, for sure. You want to dig a little deeper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no, for sure. And, and I, didn't, I didn't see it at that time. And, you know, you see it with a lot of guys. I, I get friends all the time saying, wait, you're doing what? You're not on the ice all the time. You're not doing this. And then I'll get other guys who are like, I know that the mental side, the mindset piece is everything. Like, they know that's where it all starts. That's where it all begins. But, yeah, I had my epiphany of just realizing, like, if I'm going to stay inside the youth realm and make an impact, number one, I want to make an impact on everybody, not just in one sphere, right? And that was that one organization, one spot, as many as possible, because the message needed to be said. But then the other side was that I realized when I looked at everything of what actually you need to be successful at the youth level, if you can't give me what I believe I needed, that's that was a lot of years of that fear of not being able to just say, this is what I need. If you can't deliver this, then I, you, I can't coach for you. And at the youth level, 
the standard of what I live by, what I want, they can't provide that. Well, I don't think it exists. No, it, it does. But it, it's a needle in the haystack. Yeah. It exists, but it, all the stars have to align. But that's that was the big part. And going through that, I just realized, like, if I want to be in this world and make the impact, that's where getting over that fear of all these different stories of what you thought you had to do, and then finally waking up that one day and just saying, you know what? Yeah, like you said, fuck it, we're all in. I it's definitely had on. nothing to do with it. Moving no. three times before our, before Naomi turned one had nothing to do with it. But that's the, the okay. support you gave was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. But enough about us, honestly, yeah. because we, as you know, he could just ramble on freaking <laughs> ever. So, but we we did this today, obviously, talk about fears because of Halloween. But we do we want to talk about fears that you have as parents, yeah. um, that we all have as parents, but in specific to your sport, like with your with your kids that play. So um, you want to? Yeah, jumping. Yeah, jumping in. So we put down a couple different ones, guys. And what we'd love to do is like, um, you know, put out there, guys, and let us know. Do you agree with it? Hit like. Right, another part had love, whatever it is. How are you feel about these different fears? We need your feedback. Please comment below. Yeah, let, let us know if it makes sense. And then also, guys, please share. Please share. We haven't put it on it. Please share, guys. If you guys can share this out, right? It only helps to get the message out to have again more meaningful conversations. That's what we're trying to do. The more feedback we get, the better we can get. We want to help you. Yeah, we want to get more like out, so. so please, you know, like, please share, love, like, yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, anything but. we can get. Um, but I think what. So here's a couple of things, guys, that we had as examples that we've dealt with over the course of the last, you know, going to three years, but more than that, right? This has been over the last decade that I've seen as coaches. Once I opened up my mind to understanding the parent side, here's a couple of different things we put down that has stood out so far in what we've been doing, right? What we've noticed. Of what we've noticed so far, right? So here's one of the first ones, right? Is that, do I want it more than they do? Do I want it more than they do? It's been a big one, right? That we've seen with a couple of players is where, does the parent want it more? Do, are they the ones that want this lifestyle this i want you to make to the highest levels more yeah. than their actual kids behavior and actions are lining up for it yeah and that takes a lot to look into yourself to figure that out but if you guys you know like it if you if you agree if it's something you think you might experience or if you know other families that are in that situation you know where it's the parents really pushing 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 and mm, the kids just like uh, enough and you know that's we've we've worked with families like that where that's the fear, right? That yeah. I'm pushing my kid into something that they don't really want. It's me, you know, driving that bus to make them do all this because it's something I'm trying to fulfill through my child. So that was one of them. Right, exactly. That was a huge one, and yeah. um, that's an interesting one. I think we get you know further into, but I, another one was that is this the right environment for my kid? Right, good old FOMO. 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 You used to make fun of me when I would FOMO. use that word. I know. FOMO. I know. Well, I, you, we evolved. We evolved here. We're sentence. all about evolving, right? That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. But um, the reality, right, is that is this the right environment? How many people when they're younger, whatever it is, right, we see that through the years, is that is this the best organization? Is this the best coach for my kid to play for? Is this the right situation right now? Because it's hard to see down the line in the long term what's going to end up happening. Right. Right? And that fear of missing out if I'm not on the top team. Right? If I'm not playing in that uh, environment, if I'm not in that situation, oh, I'm, I'm tripping out. Right? Yeah. Going Lisa into had a great one. There's the fear of not letting them go, leaving the nest to do what is needed for them to follow their dreams. That's a good one. Yes. Thank that you, is, we love that one. You know, we deal with a lot of families, too, that are, you know. In certain markets, you have to. Yeah. Some of these kids leave home really early. And you're right, market dependent, their situation. Yeah. And, um, like, right now, I'm like, oh, my God, I would. I already would struggle with the idea of them. Yeah, leaving. And leaving. It's, and it's, yeah, it's funny, right? Because I even had a great conversation, you know, with one of our own parents right, on that part of we talk about that of they're debating on with next season, you know, should my child leave and all that type of stuff. And we had a great conversation talking about the other side of like, you know what, where your kids at? The age of your kids at now, the situation you're in now, you have that one more year to buy. You really do. Like yeah. of just the environment that you have, you still have that if that choice is yours. Is that what's best? For the kid right now, and the kids also, you know, getting to that little bit of an older spot. But the reality is, the kid has that ability to, you know, what you can still have one more year and right. don't have to leave just yet. So everyone's different, you know, in that right. regard. Which is or the flip side, you know, is it the right time for, you know, is your child in an environment that's too intense? Is yeah. it having? Are you know? Are there some too serious, much too soon? Yeah. Yeah, too much too soon, yeah. or is it just? The they're having coping issues with the level of intensity, right? Be it because of the coach, be it because of the level of play. I mean, there's many different 
situations. Well, but- and it's a great example we just said of when you layer on that, the experience of that player I was talking about. One of those things is that, you know what? With next season, you're looking at or the, the year after. Now you're out of school. You don't have that to worry about. So they can handle more of that stress, right? Because now, you know what? I just cut out eight hours, nine hours a day of school. So now I can just focus in on playing and that's it. So that makes a huge deal of that. If you have to manage school, Absolutely. you have to manage your the, And your a lot process. of these kids put so much pressure on themselves. Oh, it's crazy. Like we, we think as parents crazy. that we have to like encourage it. But so many, when you just talk to the kids themselves, like they are putting so much pressure on themselves that we're only sometimes adding to their fire. Oh, I was like, I thought you were going to hit me with that thing. No, well, it's, it's like it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not gonna, you're not gonna survive till the end of today. That's I know, for sure. I know. But um, no, that's uh, we got another comment here from Cindy. Yes, I'm gonna this. Yep, absolutely. One. So Here's parents one. have a fear of speaking up for our kids when we know the coach is making bad and or potentially harmful decisions for fear that the coach will punish our kids. And that was one of the ones that's perfect that exactly. we had. This and that's day. a very real fear. That's a very real fear because mm-hmm. you Parents, right? Parents aren't stupid. We know that. Like parents see it, especially, you know, parents that understand whether it's they've been through, you know, been through the experience for years or they manage um, companies on their own, right? It all intersects. It's, it's universal. There's a universal language that goes into that. So Sam makes a great point of how many times we've had those situations of where, you know, the coach is an idiot or, and I hate to say it as like an idiot, but like is acting like an idiot, right? Yeah. Might not be an idiot by nature, but emo- it, it's an emotional idiot. Let's put it that way. It knows what they're doing on one side but emotionally doesn't understand the other side. And that's a big part that ends up happening where it's a very real thing when parents say, I'm afraid to go talk to the coach because I'm going to get blackballed. And it's not that the coach can really blackball you necessarily necessarily on that side because they could punish your kid kid, 100%, right? And that's the part more than anything is that if you're a good person, everyone knows you're a good person. Everyone knows that the coach is an idiot emotionally like that. Everyone, it's what it is, right? For the most part, you know if the coach is like that, everyone knows, okay, well, the coach, we all get it. They've dealt with these coaches before and all that stuff. But more importantly, that piece of it, of being able to go and talk and open up and feel comfortable to go talk to a coach that emotionally, you know what? In today's world, that's a huge piece of, that's a huge no-no. And why we do what we're doing now and why it's so important to do, get the message out there of that behavior is exactly that little thing right there, of exactly what Cindy pointed out. That's the part that has to stop. Right. That's the part we have to all accept, which for the most part, majority. Well, I'm going to pose a question, not to cut you off, but yeah. hey, I don't have the whistle, but forgive me. Um, I, no, please don't. Please don't. No, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> at what point, I'm going to ask boss. a question, You're but at what point as a parent, when you know that your kid's in a situation where the coach is acting like, I'm trying to use a nice word, but I don't have one, a Jewish canoe, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure <laughs> um, <laughs> at what point is it okay as a parent to talk to your kid about the actions of coach? Because we tell yeah. parents not to interfere, but, you know, at some point you got to clue, use it as a teachable moment with your child yeah. to say, look, your coach is kind of not being cool. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it, let's address it. Great, great question. Um, family dependent. Family dependent, right? Some families, they're so good and they're so close with their kid, right, that they have that relationship where they can be open, but also letting their kid know we're going to discuss this as an adult, but this is something that you can't bring into the environment there because it could hurt you. Right. So if that family from the get-go right, has that open communication, that honesty with their child, and through the years they can talk about that, awesome. But if it's more of a reactive family where it's always freaking out and then going, then you can't. And then it becomes if you tell the kid that and the kid gets poisoned in their head to think that, Right. And the kid doesn't have the tools to understand how to manage their perspective and their mindset and all that type of stuff. Well, then you're setting them up to basically go out because we all know unconsciously, guys, what will happen is now that they're in that environment, it's going to just, bam, they're going to go into that environment. And that it's a matter of time before the stress hits and they react in some way and let the cat out of the bag. And then, bam, coach is going to get pissed off. and oh, You said this to that player. Right. So it's all family dependent on that part of how you just manage it. But you know, it's, I like to start as young as I, I really genuinely believe in what I've seen so far of like having honest conversations. It's all depends on the maturity of the kid, Absolutely. but some kids you can start talking to them at as young as eight, nine, ten, sometimes. Right. But it's not as a majority, but for the majority part of like where it becomes, you know what you should by now be able to have those conversations by 13, 14, there should already be that door there of, Hey, you already should be able to have those conversations of listen. You've now gone through since six, seven years old, 
you've seen enough to know and be mature about these situations exist and how we handle that together is an important piece. So if that kind of answers your question, what you yeah. think that's a, that's a big part no, of that absolutely. stuff, you know, that's so, but great point. That's great another point. one. The one that came up uh, from some others too was, uh, nope. sorry. Oh, um, another main one, yep. yep. Worried about injuries. Yeah. Getting injured. getting injured. Yeah. I mean, it's a, High contact sport. Yeah, and, and think about like, and here's guys are great. Is that a fear that that exists for you that are yes listening right injuries. now? And so hit like, let us know. But if injuries are a concern or a fear um, that you have as a parent, definitely hit like, let us know. And um, mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about yeah the injuries part. I mean, okay, so let's talk about it from a perspective, guys. Of if you think about it, you know, five to ten years ago, between the changes in social media. Um, the changes in research that's happened with concussions, right? Yeah. How much of a hot topic it, it's become where now you have it, it, the influence has led to a perspective where way more parents now think about that than we did five to 10 years ago. We never thought about that. Back in the day, oh, you got to injure, oh, get out there, stop being a freaking little boy, get out there, back on the ice, get on the ice, and that's it, right? It was a different mindset. Where now it's now circulating of, oh, wait a second, injury, like especially concussions, right? It's such a hot button. As it should be. Yeah, exactly. 100%. 100%. And you know, we'll have a, a different show talking about, you know, our deeper thoughts on that part. But it's it's such an important piece of where to realize that, that having that fear going in that I might get hurt usually leads to getting hurt. And that's that's the part where well, that makes it tough. But it's different because is it the kids that the kid, fear? No, no, no. The kid, right, 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 exactly. From, the perspective like, of a parent. Right. right, right so right. I think yeah. as, a, like, I can, as a mom, like, I can't even yeah. watch – Naomi run without mm -hmm. like the fear of watching her fall because she doesn't open her eyes or look where she's going. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm sure no, that totally. carries on. So. And it's funny how you'll watch that from that perspective and I'll see it from the perspective of, all right, she's three years old. She can do that now. Like, and I know it's not probably the, the correct one. You clearly time. haven't watched her run into a couple of poles like I have. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is when I see her go down, I'm like, you know what? I'd rather see her going down when she's about a foot from the ground. For sure. And she's just going and she's getting used to it That's and fair. learning and all that stuff and feeling out the environment, discovering that versus when she gets older, it's like, yeah, you know what she learned? Like she learns now. That's but it's funny, point. I feel that for a second, then I'm like, that's just because for the most part, most of the time, yes. high percentage players. <laughs> for the most, part, most of the time she is fine. <laughs> well and I think when you're playing, you know, we're thankful for the technology, but now yeah. there is, you know, concussion testing. There are like things that you can do to set up your baseline so that you can evaluate. I mean, this is what happens when you don't have baseline testing. Right. This is what you end up with. Right. Right here. Right. So, no, for sure. No, for sure. <laughs> hey, and is there anything wrong with this donkey? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> you don't know what's wrong? I know what's wrong. Is there anything wrong with me? Please. Is there anything wrong with me? <laughs> Comment below. No. Um, you know, so that was a big one. You know, that was a big one for sure. Um, this is another interesting one, right? Does my kid really have what it takes? Right? That question that comes up, it just had a question, you know, from one of our – you know, college players on that part, mm -hmm. right? Parents got worried about, does my kid really have what it takes? Does my kid really have what it takes? Was on? Justine. Oh, Justine ages. <laughs> you know, but does that's does my kid have what it takes becomes, starts to creep in, especially as you start to see when the players start to get older, that becomes a legitimate fear because there are some players that, even coaches, you're afraid to say, you know what, at times you're afraid to say, like, you know what, right now where your kid's at, and it's a sensitive topic because you're trying to be nice of where your kid's at right now doesn't have it because I see how your kid behaves. I see that your kid doesn't do anything in the off season. I see that I told your kid already 10 times to do this one behavior and this one habit and your kid doesn't do it. So when you start to see that, it becomes tough because the parent is fear is kind of like, yeah, you're right. You're right because, and it's not because of your actions and, and sometimes it might be, but it's a lot of times because of the kid's actions of maybe they're not inspired at that time, maybe they're not motivated, but it's not saying that a few months from now, the next year, whatever it is, that they can't come back to that love and find it, which happens. So it's okay. these loaded kind of questions sometimes happen based off of just, again, timing and environment and how that kid, and it could be something that's going on at school, girlfriend, friends, whatever. There's, there's all these other factors that we don't know that could be affecting it that has nothing to do with the sport itself. It, has, it could be something else, and we don't know that. And that, that goes back to I don't know, sure, that we did, right? Is that, there's so many things you don't know that. Well, that and I think what's important, too, is like, does it really matter if they have it? If they don't have it, 
Like worst, no. I always go to that worst no, case right. place. Yeah. Okay, so worst case scenario, your kid doesn't have it, yeah. but they're involved in something where they're learning amazing things about themselves, yeah. working with others, and they're in an environment that's and they're having fun. Exactly, I mean, and that's and why that's, we're doing what we're doing is because totally. you know coming back to the whole idea of and this was a big part of when I walked away and started doing this stuff was that it was like okay I walked away all these years and what skills did I really learn what stick handling shooting passing skating okay what did I really take away but we never talked about the life skills component of what we really took away and there's so many that is even today you try to get communication in there you try to get clarity in there and it's still a struggle in day to day um, in the industry in today's world you know, like communication that. is two people talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's just one you're, person that talks all the time. Yeah, you're, you're I told good. you I need to you're get good. that you're noise. We need to learn more about sh- drum thing. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the reality of it is that when we start to look at these pieces, right, of how that falls into it, is that those parts become tough, right, Z- zoning in on. But getting, you know, getting worried about all that of how, what your kid really has, do, do they have what it takes? You just, there's so many different parts that go into that. And again, the environment that we're in is so much better. It's, I don't, I'll put it up against anything. School is great. The environment of school is important, but the environment where sport does from a communication standpoint, working together, the unity, the stress that's involved, you just, you can't beat that from an athletic standpoint of what that actually does for your life and the things you're learning inside of that environment. I just see it overall far outweighs the benefits of the regular traditional academic institutions that are out there. I don't care what I don't like, I'll put it up all day because you're learning, you're feeling that, right? You're so feeling I think that they coexist together. Like they do coexist together. So I think that they 100, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 
right? I had different situations and stories, experiences that happened that created that story inside, right? So then as I started to get older and, and going into different parts and different, you know, communities where I was, then I started to see the proof of, you can't say, right? Like case in point, not too long ago, we're in a situation, right? Where we're going in there, owner comes in to the rink, we're talking, blah, 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 and, you know, turns around and goes, you know, we're talking about one of the holidays, I forget which holiday was popping up, you know, Hanukkah or something like that. And I'll never forget the look on this owner's face when we turn around and we go, yeah, no, we're Jewish, we celebrate, you know, Hanukkah and all that. And the look on her face was just like, you're Jewish? And couldn't even hold it back. Like it was just like, and it was just like, wow, wow. You really have an issue with the fact that we're Jewish, don't you? And and that wasn't too long ago. And that, that was crazy to just see the look and to see that and just reaffirm from back in the day. Yeah. For, I mean, I spent a decade scared to say it, of just putting it out there and, and saying it all the time. And it was like, you know, I always say it, the mask, right? The mask. It's Because I can always relate to people that you don't understand all that stuff. It's like, I can relate. Right? It's so easy to, to re- relate to the minorities out there. And that's why, because it's like, I feel it. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about because I've lived it so many times. Right. They Jew them down, Jew them down, Jew them down. How many times you saw that? And so I was like, all right, can't say, you know, at times. And then now it's like when you say Jew them down, there's nothing more fun than they just look at that person right in the eye and goes, you know, I'm Jewish. And then they just, they're, they look on their face and like, uh, well, you don't look Jewish. Right. Because <laughs> apparently, yeah, I got the horns right now. Right. That's, that's, that's what Jews are. Right? We got our horns coming out. Right. But, it, that was a huge fear of mine for years that was afraid to be open about it. And even to this day, I get that tinge of like right. being open of it. You just kind of feel a little weirdness of saying, <laughs> you know, a little weird saying it weird. right yeah. on that part. Right. I'm going to bring up a different one here. If that's okay from, from Mama D. Yep. But uh, minor pro is so different. You're just an object. It's yep. different from any other level. I'm still fearful of the rejection my son will experience. You could be off the team in a quick minute. And um, if I'm going to start with that one because, um, you know, this was the beginning of a realization for this guy when he was playing and had such a passion and love for the game that didn't even – had t- such blinders on that this was the exact case he was in. And when I started working for my first pro team and seeing how these players at times are talked about behind the scenes, like they're a commodity. You are an object. Whether you like it or not, you are paid to do a job, and you either get it done or you don't. Period. End of story. It doesn't matter uh, really the other stuff. You're either part of the formula or you're not. And I would start to have these conversations with you, and it took you a long time to kind of have that aha moment that's like, holy shit, you're right. It is. I am just an object. Like, you could easily be traded out for somebody else that's going to do it, the younger model, the faster model, whatever it is. And it's a very real thing. And, and, you know, rejection is definitely, I think, a scary thing for everybody. Like, no one wants to be rejected. That doesn't feel good. You're not like, yeah, all right. Right, exactly. Like, no, well, it doesn't have that feeling. And, and the, a big part of, in the old school days, and even still, like, it, it's still a part of it, right, is that I remember how they would use the fear, you know, against oh, us. absolutely. They would use it, oh, what, you don't want to be a pro? Oh, what, you don't want to play in the NHL one day? Like, they use that against you instead of helping you understand how to deal with your perspective, you know, and, and now it's just total change, right? Now so many of them know, oh, players are soft. And I, no, it's not that they're soft. It's they're way more educated. Like they know now that what I feel is real and it's not bullshit. What you're putting off is bullshit. What you're putting off is you don't genuinely care for me. And I know. And that's the, that's the part that, you know, the, the battle that goes you know, between both worlds, but but that's the part that was really big back in the day was that, hey, who's next? Who's next, right? We can get the next guy. We can get the next oh, guy one, right? That's, that's what it was. Like, so there was a very small percentage where, hey, we, we'd show you the love and all that stuff. But for the rest, it's like, hey, if you don't perform, that's it. And that's a part that people don't realize is how much you, that fear will get used against you. And at times it still does, right? But that passion is, it's so pure of you love it. And that's a, that's, that's what they a, use for it. That's what they use on you. That's a distinct difference between the youth level and the pro level is so many people don't realize is that when you're going into the youth level, it's nice to have those dreams and it's important to have. It. And this is the big argument that I make is that when players turn 13, 14, we're doing them an injustice by not talking about the business side of this game. I agree. 
is talking about the two worlds have to collide and let you know it's a business now. If you're playing high level athletics, it's a business now. You're 13, 14, Absolutely. welcome to the business world along with, hey, you love your job, you love doing it, but you gotta understand there's a whole business side to it. And there's that and a big part of what, you know, we, our message and what we try to jump into is for people to understand and become aware of that is that business side is real. That business side is real and there's nothing wrong with it because it's but the way it is. high level youth, you know, teams. Yeah. You have a couple losing seasons, someone out of a job. 100%. Yeah. Well, or you're Good, not bad, doing what the bad. owner wants right. exactly or another staff member. But it's. Yeah. There's so many different things. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But that's a huge part. That's a huge part on that side of that. When you look at it from that perspective is that, again, how much awareness do we raise to that fact to get over that fear? Because if yeah, just imagine how many more younger players, when I see the things that they're going through as a whole, if, again, the education inside the system was you're coming to our team and this is what it is. And now you're going to be involved in this team. And hey, by the way, now not only are we going to learn about systems and all that, but you're going to understand the business side of this thing. This is how it works. Well, I think even at coaches and ownership level, they don't see the big picture, that they don't have the awareness to even acknowledge that that's what's going on. You all, well, yeah, 100%. You're that, right. There's, that's why Unconsciously, that, there's no doubt about it. I don't it. think people think about it in those terms because it's yeah. not pretty. You don't want to think about, you know, kids at that age and that it's already like a business and they don't consider themselves, like especially coaches, you look at yourself as a business person. No, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't exist that way. Exactly. And it's funny, right? The label of business is nothing more than becoming a pro. That's it. Like the irony of how we, we talk about wanting to be a professional in the NHL and all that stuff, but it's like, but you can teach them. Why do we go to high school? Why do we go to college? Why do we do these things? It's to become a professional at some, something, right? It's, that's the whole point. That's the whole idea behind it. So that's what we love about what we're doing with our stuff, right? It's to point out that we're all going to be pros in something. At some point, you're all going to be professionals in something. Yes. And this game gives you that environment or any game for that matter allows you and gives you the environment to understand how to handle yourself yeah, like, like a professional. Exactly. But, um, you know, always own in. I'm going to post that from Joseph. It's yep. difficult to identify what my youth hockey players is actually fearful of. Well, no doubt about it. What's a great comment there is their own self-awareness. How much can they? It's, it's not your job, right? And, and Joe, great. You know, I love that. Is that from his perspective or as a coach, you look at it and it's like, uh, sitting and talking to your players and asking them these questions, well, how much do they actually know that? How much confidence do they have to be able to actually say, this is how I feel? Because the system... Or the practice of even, like, checking in with yourself. Right, that's, right. that's, that's the point. That's happens. Right? It's that's not the point. intentional. It's no, it's not used to it. What we talk about from the time kids are young. Right from day one, majority of the time, it's what? Do this, do that. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. And then when they turn 12, 13, 14, we say, think for yourself. Think for yourself, kiddo. That's what we want you to do. Okay, think for my, okay, believe in myself, think for myself. All this. Wait a second, what does that mean? What do you mean think and believe for myself? Like, I don't understand what you mean by that. Yeah. Because they haven't been taught that. How do you know if you don't know? Absolutely. How do you know what that means? And, and that's a great part there is that it's, you can't, as a coach, try to go in and go, oh, okay, what are you fearful of? What are you thinking of? And all that stuff without actually, number one, having your own education behind what you're looking for. But then number two, you're dealing with, you don't, you're, the kid doesn't know themselves. So you're asking a question that even the kid doesn't even know the answer to majority of the time. And you're trying to figure it out. And this, and this world just keeps, and then the parents are guessing, well, I think he's feeling this. I think how many times the parents are wrong about how their kid feels Absolutely. because they're afraid, fear to talk to their parents. And it's one of the main reasons why in our program, we have our players journal. Yeah. We have them constantly exactly. writing down how they're feeling and in different situations. And they, you know, and then, because when you get to look back at that, right. is when you can actually see, oh, wow. Because you start to not think that I've been like that a bunch of times, but I can look back over the last few weeks and realize maybe I was really stressed out or I've been really, you know, upset. And I didn't I didn't think about it because the day was just going by, but now I've journaled my thoughts and I can see, you know, what's going on here. Because when you see it, what's great about journaling the thoughts is it leads to, again, conversation. Absolutely. It leads to, well, in what situation are you there? What, what, in what situation did you feel like thinking about that, right? That my coach doesn't like me as an example, right? Oh, my coach hates me is a, is oh, a big one. God. It's a big one. And it comes yeah, up and they're, and they're afraid to say nothing. It comes back to what's in the seven that part right? of that. But do you know that for a fact? Well, I think a lot of times kids think just because they're not playing at every single minute, which sure. I ask all the time. And I always say, do you evaluate yourself worth based on your ice time? Right. One exactly. has nothing to do with the other. Your exactly. coach doesn't mean he doesn't like you just because exactly. maybe you're not getting special teams or something for that day. Right. Like, exactly. There's so many levels to 
Bingo. Do that. Exactly. But that the journaling is what helps us to sit down and have that conversation and go, well, okay, so you're you're saying this of well, uh, coach didn't put me out at the end of the game, or coach took me out here, or put me on the you know last line, fourth line, third line, whatever it is. And you just sit there and you go, okay, well, let's take a look at the situation. You know, what's going on? Is this normal behavior for the coach? Does the coach do this with other players? Yes, yes. Okay, has coach been specific to you, saying anything to you about that? No. And as we start to go down the line, you break it down, and the the kid suddenly goes, well, I guess, yeah, you're right. You know what? I I probably should go talk to coach and ask first before I put these thoughts in my head. Well, and here again, fear to step outside their role. Fear to step outside. Bingo. Huge one. Huge one. Exactly what we are saying, talking about earlier, right, Joe? Awesome comment there of that yeah. that big part, right? Is that the difference between as a player, you know, I remember even myself dealing with that as a player when I remember playing specifically at one point in Charlotte where the coach said to me, Well, you're gonna be like a third line guy. That's that's what we're looking at is like at the next level, you're gonna play in the NHL, that's you're gonna be like a third line guy. And I remember that day thinking about this, and this was already when I was you know in my twenties, right? Like 24, 25, whatever, thinking like, what are you talking about? I want to be on the first line. I want to be on the second line. And I remember thinking that at that time, not knowing any better, of like, dude, that'd be cool. It should be a third line in the NHL. Like, what? Sure, why not? <laughs> but, like, that's the story that we get in our heads, right, is that understanding that your role, because just because you might think that the third, fourth line thing isn't as sexy or that your role seems so, you know, um, I was just going to say the word. It, it seems so elementary, I guess. You, what they don't understand is as a pro – that's what the guys want at the professional level. They want the ones that are just going to be, you know what, you're going to consistently do it. I can count on you to do that thing, and you're going to be amazing at it. And the things that aren't as sexy, I'm not the goal scorer. I'm not the points guy. And there's nothing the wrong. ego, that, right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's awesome. But to hear that, it's like, mm, that's not as cool. Right? And that that's a part, right? Is that it's not as cool. But is it cool if you're making five, you know, Five hundred you know, to a million dollars a year, and that's your job. Would that be cool? Or that, but again, that comes back, comes back to the business side. Are you doing it because you genuinely love your passion, you love what you want to do, and you want to make a living doing it and bring value to the world doing that? Or no, I just wanted to do it if you were giving me that. I'll just do that role if, if I'm this role. But if you're going to tell me this role, no, nah, I don't want to do it. Cool. So there it is. So you're aware you don't want to do it like that. Awesome. Step aside. Go find what you want to do. I definitely think to kind of wrap up the whole fear conversation, though, that we want everybody to be able to take away, um, and even ourselves, that step one is obviously admitting that it's okay to have a fear and just acknowledge that that's your fear. That's first and foremost, because you can't even, like, work the problem out or work the fear out if you're not willing to accept that that's what's really going on. Um, And I think, like... As a parent, you so bad want to like steer your kid in the right direction and you don't want to hold them back based on your fears. Right. So it's something to keep in mind, like not intentionally. And then and that, that's a huge point right there, right? That's, that's what's so tough to do. And again, that's why as a family, you understand the holistic approach, right? Is that Absolutely. being open and honest with each other, mom and dad, I'm, I'm afraid of this for you, kid. Yes, I'm afraid of this. That conversation is so important, yeah. so important, right? But that's the part where that's what we all struggle with. This is you know, communication. Exactly. Communication creates more fear than pretty much anything else. Right, right now. Lack of communication. Lack of communication. Yes, right. Exactly. Right, right. No, oh. Lack of thank you. Thank you. Words. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Right. Uh, but that's exactly it. And that's that first step is such a huge step of admitting. Yep, I'm scared of this. Sounds simple by nature. Sounds simple. But wow, how complex and difficult. Because once you have that conversation, then somebody else is going to bring, you're vulnerable, you're open, someone else may Mm -hmm. have a point of view you didn't think of. There's the solutions then there. It's available to you. You know, but you've got to at at first be willing to say, this is my fear. Exactly. Exactly. Like I can tell you right now, I have a fear of roller coasters and um, I'm aware of it and um, it don't matter. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm fully okay with that. Like it's, I've acknowledged, yep, I'm aware. I get it. You can tell me this and that about it and that's all good, but fuck no. Yeah. So, and sometimes that's okay too. That's, yeah. there's nothing, doesn't make me whatever kind of person. It doesn't affect me as a person, but no, you know, completely. I'm yeah. the person that holds the bags at the amazing park. Everyone needs that friend. Everyone needs that person. Like that's 100%, me. 100%, right? Like I have fear of telling you if your cooking sucks, Okay. Right, but I can't. I oh. can't always do. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just playing. You know, I love it. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, not cooking dinner. Oh my god. I'm just I, for the record. I am just kidding. I love her cooking. 
something unconsciously decided to make you bring that one out. I thought that brought out, and I hope a couple people laughed at it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long day here. we got to have fun with it. Um, but, yeah, again, yeah, obviously. Hey, guys, you see this, please share it, put okay. it out there, like it, you know, love it, whatever it is, angry little symbol, anything we need to know. Yeah. And comments, right? The more there's so many good comments today that a lot of them are gonna be able to go, you know, jump off of here. But this is something that isn't an easy thing to talk about, and it's not something that just we can easily put out there and that's it. But having these conversations now, right? Make big resolutions. Resolutions. <laughs> a big part of that, guys, now is this is that it's talking about it and putting it out there and being open and transparent about it is that it's real and we all deal with it. That's step one of admitting to yourself, talking as a family the environment of the coaches you have and all that, this is why we're doing all this stuff, right? It's to be able to just keep getting it out there. It's cool. There's nothing wrong to be afraid. Yeah. There's nothing but wrong But I will say, like, fears can be a sticky conversation. Not everyone is, is yeah, comfortable to be like, here, here let me type my fear on Facebook for the world to see exactly. what the fears are. So if you have a fear that really is maybe, like, in your head, it's bugging you, you want to be able to get it out in some way, right. like, yeah. shoot us a PM. And we can either make it a show topic, like not with calling you out, obviously, mm -hmm. but like we, we want to be there to help. So not everyone is comfortable to like type everything up on Facebook, a lot of lurkers, you know, and there's, oh, yeah. you know, we encourage you to share. But if that's not your cup of tea, please still allow us to help you. Shoot us a PM and and, and we'd love to be able to do that. For yeah, you, exactly. So. This is the beginning of the process. I mean, we could talk about the, the fear one. I mean, we could have it once a month or, you know, once, yeah, once every whatever, a couple months if we're doing the show once a week. But it's a topic that goes nonstop, right? It's not, it's one of those topics that it's, it's, it's endless because that's at the core of the simplicity of this whole thing, yeah. right? There's that, the complexity kicks in of all these different things. And that's why we're here. We're just here to talk about, you know, open lines of communication. Yeah. So open it up. That It's all normal. Like, the point yeah. is to talk about this is all normal. We all deal with it. This isn't some kind of, oh, like it's, it's normal. But the only way we're going to change it is by putting it out there and saying, yes, this is completely normal behavior, but how do we change it? How do we change it? Guess what? We live in a world now. You can actually change it. You can. We know that for a fact. <laughs> we know that for a fact. So I'm done. Are you sure? I'm done. I know. I think he's been talking now for like, I don't know how many days. No. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm out of here. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, I know it's not an easy topic, so we hope you got something out of it. We certainly so much enjoy having these conversations with you. Yeah. And we'll be here next Monday, same yeah, no time, doubt. same place. Yeah, so exactly. The topic's coming, though. We're going to let you know. We're, we're going to tease it. it. Yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, tell a friend. Bring a friend. It's yeah. fun. Grab a bowl by the Might just be Vince next week. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if I can handle all this. Guys, happy Halloween. Enjoy yourselves tomorrow. Be safe. Kids, remember, the people with the big chocolate bars, try to rotate, change your costume, come back a couple times. That's a little strategy right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> See you. <Bye. laughs>